So, number one, Joe Biden's press conference over at thewriting.com. That's R I G, not W, but R, thewriting.com. Uh, they saw, you know, basically, <laughs> the, their, their, their subtitle is Alerting Liberal Audiences to Today's Headlines from the Right. I would say, you know, we read white, right wing news so you don't have to. But, but here's, here's what uh, uh, conservative Americans, Republican Americans, were getting from their media about yesterday's press conference. I'm guessing you caught parts of it. I described uh, on the air in the third hour of our program yesterday after it was over, uh, basically all the major points that Joe Biden touched on. And some of the questions were just stupid. You know, I, you know are you going to run for a second term? Anytime you ask any president that, anytime in his, certainly in his or her, well, it's always been his up to this point, but in any case, anytime you ask him, anytime in his first two, three, even early four years, the answer is going to be, of course. Because who wants to declare two months into their presidency that they're a one term, that they're already a lame duck? It just doesn't happen. It was a stupid question. And then it was followed up with, well, is Kamala Harris going to be your running? I mean, give me a break. It was like the press corps. Anyhow, here's the, the, the Washington Times, the headline, Biden press conference was elder abuse. It was an hour of incoherent babbling, except when President Joe Biden read directly from his talking points. The questions were polite and predictable from pre-selected approved reporters, right? Fox News, Biden's first press conference leaves Americans with more questions than answers. Kaylee McEnany, at his first press conference, Biden offers confusing and completely unacceptable answers. Western Journal, Biden laps into nonsense during first solo presidential press conference. Uh, the next one, Biden, this is from CNS News, Biden suffers four-second mental breakdown, meltdown, struggles to move on to next question. Thursday at his press conference as president, Joe Biden appeared to forget what he was saying that became so confused that he struggled to move on to a new topic. Uh, WND, World Net Daily, Biden survives his first press conference barely, barely. He lost his train of thought, assuming he had one. He forgot some of the questions that were asked. He continually flipped through a notebook, strange to see among past commanders in chief and read, read prepared answers. What an ugly scene. Oh, man. I, you know, I, I went back and watched parts of it. It happened while I was on the air yesterday. And I thought he did a great job. I mean, it was so nice to see an American president actually answering questions honestly, which is not all that common, you know, or at least it hasn't been all that common in the last four years. But I, I think the bigger news and really the only story of the day is what happened in Georgia yesterday. Uh, Brian Kemp, the governor, who became governor by refusing to allow 50, 50 some odd thousand, he, he won by only 50,000 votes, and Stacey Abrams had registered 53,000 black voters. And after he purged a couple hundred thousand people, including a lot of black voters off the voting rolls the previous year, this was 2017, in 2018, when he was running against Stacey Abrams, he was still Secretary of State, and he refused to let her 53,000 black voters go on the voting rolls. And then he won the election by 50,000 votes. That guy, he's now the governor because of that. And he signed this legislation yesterday. Um, it was introduced into the House of Representatives in Georgia. It passed the House. It was introduced into the Senate in Georgia. It passed the Senate. It was sent to the governor. It was signed by the governor all in less than 10 hours. It's called a blitzkrieg. So Milton Mayer, back in 1953-54, went to Germany and befriended 10 average Germans and asked them, how did this happen? And this is what one of them said. This is in Milton Mayer's book, They Thought They Were Free, which is uh, it used to be out of print for a while, and I started ranting about it on the air, and now it's back in print, which is just great. Anyhow, this is from his, his book. He's quoting one of the Germans who survived the, uh, the Nazis. The guy was a college professor. He says, what happened here was the gradual habituation of the people, little by little, to being governed by surprise, to receiving deliber uh, decisions deliberated in secret, to believing that the situation was so complicated that the government had to act on information which the people couldn't understand. Or so dangerous that even if the people could understand it, it couldn't be released because of national security. 
I mean, Kemp did the exact same thing that Jeb Bush did for his brother George back in 2000, blowing people, black people off the, blow, off the voting rolls. And, uh, and now, well, the, 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 the German who was talking to Milton Mayer continues, as if he had been living in Georgia or Iowa or Wisconsin for the past decade. And by the way, you can read this for free with no advertisements or anything over at HartmanReport.com. I, I put my daily rants there seven days a week right now. Uh, you can also get it in your email box for free, no ads, nothing like that. It's just, this is just, this is what I do. I, I am committed to this. And, uh, but anyhow, I, I, as I said, this, this continues. This is, that, this is one of those Germans in 1953, 54, that Milton Mayer was talking about in his book that was published in 55. Quote, this separation of government from the people, this widening of the gap took place so gradually and so insensibly, each step disguised as a temporary emergency measure or associated with true patriotic allegiance or with real social purposes. In all the crises and reforms so occupied the people that they didn't see the slow motion underneath of the whole process of government growing remoter and remoter. To live in this process is absolutely not to be able to notice it. Please try to believe me, unless one has a much greater degree of political awareness, acuity, than most of us had ever had the occasion to develop. Each step was so small, so inconsequential, so well explained, or on occasion regretted, that unless one were detached from the whole process from the beginning, unless one understood what the whole thing was in principle, what all these little measures that no patriotic German could resent must one day lead to, one no more saw it developing from day to day than a farmer in his field sees the corn growing. And then, one day, it is over his head. This is where we're, this is where we're at. And he goes on to say, you see, you don't know exactly how or where to move. Believe me, this is true. Each act, each occasion is worse than the last, but only a little worse. You wait for the, the one great shocking occasion thinking that others, when the shock comes, will join you in resisting. You don't want to act or talk alone. You don't want to go out of your way to make trouble. And then yesterday, Georgia State Representative Park Cannon, a black woman, elected re legislator, was arrested for knocking on Governor Kemp's door as he and his all-white, all-male contingent signed this bill. She was arrested by an all-white police force as he was signing his gutting democracy bill, as the German told Milton Mayer. But that one great shocking occasion when tens or hundreds of thousands will join with you never comes. That's the difficulty. If the last and worst act of the whole regime had come immediately after the first and the smallest, thousands, yes, millions would have been sufficiently shocked if, let us say, the gassing of the Jews in 43 had come right after the German firm stickers on the windows in non-Jewish shops in 33. You know, President Obama warned us about this and specifically cited Nazis, not the, the rise of Nazi Germany. And he did this while Donald Trump was president. I will share his quote with you on the other side of this break, and then I'll pick up your phone calls. Uh, oh, and one last thing I wanted to tell you about. We had a, a poll yesterday over on our YouTube channel. We asked, should members of Congress force to look at the dead victims of gun violence? 61% yes with the agreement of the families. 36% yes. Show them to everybody. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And only 3% said, no, keep the photos hidden so we can't see what happens with guns. I think it was predictable, but it's still a kind of cool poll. We'll be right back. Thank you. 